Good evening. Thank you for joining me. This is the Q&A session for the Duluth Superior Symphony Youth Orchestra's program. If you're joining us this evening, feel free to put comments. And we'll answer your questions. Tonight, we're going to go through the process for um, submitting an audition and submitting um, a membership application. Everything is online this year, which is new. I've already received a number of questions. And these are topics that we are going to cover, such as how do I prepare the audition? How do I know if I need to audition? How do I upload a video to YouTube? And things such as that. So this is the Duluth Spear Symphony Youth Orchestra's Q&A session for the 2020-2021 season, which will begin in September. All right, we're gonna start by heading directly to the website. I'll step you through the process. All information for the auditions can be found at dsso.com forward slash youth orchestra. And we'll be going there right now. I'll share my screen. And so when you head to the website, this is the first page you'll see if you go directly to that link. If you end up at the DSSO homepage, you can go across the top and select Youth Orchestra and then Youth Orchestra again as a, a theme to it. All right, this is our landing page for the Youth Orchestra's program. On this initial page, you'll see some of the general information about our program. It tells when our rehearsals are, when our concerts that we have planned at this time are. Some information about auditions, and we'll go through this in more detail in just a moment. A description of the various orchestras and ensembles in our program. And tuition information towards the bottom. All right. So the youth orchestra's program, program <clears throat> excuse me, the youth orchestra's program is, is 80 years old. Actually, we're celebrating the 80th anniversary uh, this year. So we've already passed the 80th year of operation of the program. Um, this program, <laughs> Uh, has four ensembles in it. Um, it's the Youth Symphony, which is the uh, the highest level orchestra, and the Concert Orchestra, which is an intermediate orchestra, um, and then um, the Sinfonia program, which is not just one orchestra, but a program of uh, various small ensembles. And um, and it's new this season. Uh, the format of it is new this season, and. Uh, it will be supported by a lot of extra coaching and um, the process uh, this year means that you don't have to audition if you want to join the Symphonia program. You will be well supported. So please, if you have an interest, come on in. The Symphonia program is just for string players, for violins, violas, cellos, and basses. The concert orchestra is for all instruments, including uh, the brass instruments and the woodwind instruments. The youth symphony is also a full orchestra like the concert orchestra. 
And the percussion ensemble is all percussionists. It's a great fun group and the percussionists from the ensemble play with both the concert orchestra and the youth symphony. Tuition information for the program for the youth symphony is $600 and for the concert orchestra and symphonia and percussion ensemble is $400 for the year. We can answer some of the questions regarding billing and uh, what this looks like for the coming year later on in this session. All right, so let's go back up here. When you've decided which of these is the best fit for you, you ask yourself the question, should I audition? Yes, you should audition. Are you between 10 and 18 years old and have a lot of interest and would like to be with other people who really value uh, playing uh, challenging music, yes, please, please come and join us. So what do you do then? Like I said, if you want to audition for Symphonia program, you do not need to do an online audition this year. But everybody, including the Symphonia applicants, needs to fill out the membership application form, which on the auditions page is available under the heading required for everyone. Please fill out and submit the 2021 membership application form. And here it is. It's a fully online form. There is an option if you would like to click here, you could get a PDF uh, version of this file. You can print it and mail it into the DSSO office. And here's the address here. But this is very easy to fill out. You want to put your name in and I will, I will fill this out. I'm joining Symphonia. Here's my email. My cell phone, let's see. I'll just um, say I don't have one. I'm too young to have a cell phone. Here's my address, blah, blah, blah. Don't put blah, blah, blah. I wanna give you my address. <laughs> right, I do live in Duluth. And of course that's in Minnesota. And here's the zip code. And then another phone number. The asterisks next to the fields mean that those are required fields. Age, wow, I don't know if I wanna tell you that. I'll say I'm 10, clearly that's not true. So what year would I be born in? Hmm, 2010, right? All right, my first instrument, it's gonna be, I can do this drop down. Hmm, violin. Number of years played. I've been playing for two years. Private lessons. Oh, I haven't had any private lessons. Second instrument. I play a little bit of piano. I've played piano for three years, but I only took lessons for one year. What school do I go to? I go to Stowe School. What grade will I be in in the fall? That means when we start school in the fall, what grade are you going to be in? So I'm going to be in the fifth grade. My school teacher is Mrs. Olson. My private teacher is none or an A. In 2019 and 20, I was a member of the DSSYO's, hmm, none of these. I wanna be in the Symphonia this year. So I select none. I'm a new applicant for 2021. If you are a returning member, just put the, the ensemble that you played in last year. All right, if you are a returning member and you don't want to move to a different orchestra, for instance, if you were in Symphonia and you don't wanna to move to the concert orchestra, or if you were in concert orchestra and you don't want to try to move to the youth symphony, then you check this. No, I'd like to stay in the same group and do not need to audition. If you do want to try 
out for the, the next level of orchestra, then you want to um, check, yes, I plan to submit an audition. And we'll discuss the details of the audition in a moment. All right, so since I'm the new applicant, I'm not gonna click either one of those. Primary contact from my parent and guardian. Um, I'm gonna put Helen. And that's my mom. And I'm gonna leave her phone number off for right now. And she doesn't do email, so I'm gonna put my email on here again. Sometimes the student doesn't have an email and the parent will put in their email for the student. And that's just fine as well. All right, if I wanted to put a secondary contact in here, I would. The more ways we have to get a hold of you, the better. And I'm definitely not a robot, not today at least. And then I just click submit and that gets sent directly to the youth orchestra's email. And we get a nice summary of who you are and whether or not we should expect an audition uh, video to come. All right, so I've done that. And then I want to go back into the youth orchestra's page and I wanna go back into the audition page. And then I need to read the instructions. If I have determined that I do need to submit an audition, and here's all of the things that I just discussed as to how to determine whether you need to submit one. If you've determined that, yes, you do need to, how are you going to do it? So all auditions will be submitted electronically via email. And here's how we do it. It's a little bit complicated this year. We've had to come up with a process on short notice to make sure that we have uh, our membership settled for the beginning of the year. Of course, we don't know yet what the beginning of the year is going to look like, but we are preparing as if we are going to start in the fall. If it turns out that we don't start in the fall, we will have alternative ways of being in contact and working on music with you in small groups uh, online. So we just don't know enough information yet. And um, we're gonna go ahead with the plans and, um, and hope for the best. So submitting it electronic auditions. You wanna make a video of yourself. You can just record that on your phone or a tablet or a laptop, however, uh, whatever you have available. And then you can either submit one video with all of the requirements that we'll discuss below, or you can submit um, a, a few different videos, um, like with your scales, with your excerpt, with the um, solo that you're gonna do. Um, You wanna make sure that when you frame it, I'm gonna show you an example of it, of a video that I did um, myself. Uh, you wanna make sure that we can see the part um, that of, of you that plays the instrument. For instance, I recorded a video as a flute player, which is really my main instrument. And I made sure that you could see um, the, how I hold the flute and uh, my hands moving on the keys. And so uh, that gives a lot of information to the, to the people who will be reviewing these videos. So um, a lot of times it's easiest, depending on your instrument, you might have to do, um, you might have to either put it in a portrait um, orientation or a landscape orientation, which is longer this way. So that just depends on your instrument and how much of you needs to be shown. All right. so. We'll look at the uh, instructions for each instrument in just a moment. But after you're done, you're going to upload your video to YouTube. You log into make a, make a YouTube uh, account and, um, or you can log directly into it with your Google account. And then um, I will step through this process of what this looks like. You you upload the file and make these settings. I'll show you that in detail in just a moment. And then you send the link to that file in an email to youthorchestras at dsso.com. You wanna put your name and your instrument. 
we can see your instrument, but if you just write it in the email, it's easier for us to organize things. A link to your video, and then you want to take a picture or scan your um, the music for your solo that you're going to perform and attach that to the email. And then make sure that you filled out a membership application prior to submitting this uh, audition video email. All right, so what are these auditions? What are them? What are they for each of the uh, instruments? So if you're a string player, you're going to play a solo, one or two uh, short selections from a solo, two or three minutes is enough. Um, when you record the video, make sure to, if, if you do one video, make sure you say your name at the top of the video. If you do a number of short videos, make sure you say your name at the head of each one, just to make sure that we don't mix anybody up. I don't think we will, but I want to make sure. So, um... Major scales, all strings will prepare a G major and D major scale according to your skill level. And then the excerpts, which I'll show you down below on this page. You're gonna download, print and prepare your required excerpt. You could also read it right off of your device if, if that works for you. And then um, of course the membership application form. Now, um, we will be having uh, some videos posted within the next week or so that show examples of playing each of the excerpts and options for uh, playing the scales at different levels. And um, they, those videos will be made by members of the Duluth Superior Symphony Orchestra, which will be pretty exciting to get to see them do that. So check back if you're already working on this, check back and you get some extra information. Woodwinds and brass instruments, same thing, a solo, same way for the strings. Major scales are different according to what uh, instrument you play and that's all listed right down here. A chromatic scale, if you notice, a chromatic scale was not required for the string instruments, but it is required for the woodwinds and the brass instruments. Make sure to read through these. And then the excerpt that applies to your instrument for the orchestra that you want to try for. All right, so those are the detailed instructions. I realize we may have more questions about those because I'm going through them pretty quickly, but um, I'll address those later if so. So concert orchestra and youth symphony, there's excerpts listed only for those two because for people who are familiar with the program, this year, Symphonia applicants do not need to submit an audition. If you were in Symphonia last year and you want to try for concert orchestra, here are the excerpts right here. If you were in concert orchestra last year and you want to try for youth symphony, here are your excerpts in this column. If you've never been in the program and you have a school teacher or a, a school music teacher or a private music teacher, uh, you can ask them to help you evaluate what level of orchestra you want to apply for. And you can probably get a good idea of the level that you're ready for by taking a look at both of the excerpts for your instrument. All right, so I'm going to go into the flute excerpt here and show you. This is what the flute excerpt looks like for concert orchestra. It says that right at the top here. I get a lot of information here. It tells me where it's from. It tells me what movement it's from. It tells me what the ideal tempo should be. And it's showing me that the entire excerpt is played in 2-2, two, two, which is cut time. So I have a lot of information there to start with.
And then when those videos come from our DSSO members, uh, those will be available to help you prepare as well. And of course, if you study privately, you should bring it to your teacher as well. Then you would take this, you could uh, print it just by going into here and selecting print. Right, so. Coming back over to here. All right, so if you are a percussionist, you have a little bit different uh, process and we actually have um, the percussion ensemble director, Dr. Brett Jones with us tonight. And I am going to share the screen here with him. I have to stop sharing my screen. This is my first time on this platform, so <laughs> I'm learning. Hello. Hi, Dr. Jones, how are you? I'm doing great, how are you doing? Great, thank you for joining me tonight. My pleasure. So I, I noticed already one of the, the questions um, that was submitted was about percussion auditions and it's it's kind of funny and it's been an interesting time the past couple of months for many musicians, um, but certainly percussionists because we're used to having school instruments or something to be able to, to play on and practice on. Um, so I think every, every person seems to have a, a slightly different um, situation at home and and we'll make it anything anything work so i've um i have some students that i've been teaching uh online right now who don't have a snare drum at all but have a pair of sticks um that they can play on and if you don't have a practice pad or anything i one thing that works really well if you have a mouse pad um that can that can be great um and and work but if you have a practice pad or a snare drum at home you should be all set for the snare drum portion of the audition of the audition uh what's a little harder for most of us is the mallet percussion portion and um you might have uh just a small set of bells or something that uh that you bought back in sixth grade when you were starting band uh and i i would encourage you to do as much as you can on on that if that's what you have at home for the mallet percussion portion because that at least uh, give me a chance gives me a chance to see your hands and see you play the instrument if you don't have that but you have a piano or an electric keyboard uh, that would that would work as well uh, because that just allows us to see that you can read um, you know pitched notation and and get around and there's a lot of similarities between piano and uh, mallet percussion. So those would be my recommendations and um, you should have a couple of uh, videos from me uploaded here in a few days as well uh, that will kind of help with the, that audition and give some ideas. Thank you very much. So what do you need to see when somebody is doing the the audition for you. What would you? What would help you the most when you evaluate their audition? Sure, that's a great question. So um, uh, certainly, I want to see the, see the hands. So um, if the camera is far enough back, then you know if I can see your your face and everything, that's great. Um, uh, but most importantly, are the hands. So unlike uh, what Melanie said with the, with the flute and and you know, I, I don't really need to see the face, facial expressions or anything while you're playing. That percussion is funny like that. So. So you can be making funny faces, but I really just want to see the hands uh, it, and that will be the most important thing. Great, thank you very much. Thank you, thanks for having me on. I'm gonna keep you in our guest waiting room in case we need to uh, answer any more questions, but I'm gonna go ahead and uh, step us through um, the recording and submitting um, to YouTube and how we do the rest of that process right now. I have a couple of questions that came in regarding that process, so I'm going to do that. Okay, so.
Okay. Earlier today, earlier today, I made a recording. I'm just going to show you the recording here. I need to switch the share screen. And to here. There we go. And this is just an example. This is not the best example, but it is an example. And what I want you to take away from it is that you do not have to be perfect when you're doing this. Just do your best and don't worry. Don't sweat the details. You just want to get something done. So here is my audition for flute for concert orchestra. Now I'm not sure if I'm not sure if you can hear that. Excellent. Okay. I have confirmation that you can. And I'll move that ahead. Okay, so you saw there that I didn't sweat the details with the uh, sound quality on the microphone. Um, I just used my microphone that was in my computer and I just went straight through and did the audition. And that is what we need. Just want, just want you to get something done. So, um, all right, so then I saved that file as my, um, as an MP4 file, and then I need to go to YouTube, and let me share my screen here. Okay, so I've signed into my YouTube. Um, 
account here. And in this section up in the left, upper left-hand corner, I can go to a section called uh, videos, my videos. And this is all of the videos that I've uploaded on my channel. The way I upload the file is to go up here to create and upload videos. And then I select a file, I can either drag it or select it from my directory structure. And I choose that. And then I want to say, this is Melanie Seaver Concert Orchestra Audition. And then, I don't really need to make a description. If you want to tell us something there, that's fine. You can you can do that. Then I do next. Um, I need to answer this question. Is it made for kids or not? Um, I'm going to say no, it's not made for kids because if it is made for kids, then it, has, it goes through a whole other process. All right. Next. Just go through this screen here. Here's the um, visibility selection here. And what you wanna do is select unlisted. This will allow you to share the link and the people watching the link do not have to log into YouTube themselves to do it. All right, I don't have to worry about scheduling it. It will just be active at that. And here's my video link that will be set up. I can actually copy this link, but I want to save this video first. And it goes through a process on YouTube. Converts it. All right, so I am uh, going to um, stop this process because it has actually identified that that's an exact file from this one, from this one here, that I had downloaded before, right here. So you see here, I go into that file, it says, once it's already, once it's completely done uploading to YouTube, you'll have this screen for it. And um, you can come into here and copy the, um, the video link, and you can then use that link to email. So you type a message, and my email is frozen. That's wonderful. So what I would do is I would start a new email message. It's completely frozen. Oh, uh, maybe not. Maybe I can do it. Hmm. Okay. Well, it won't let me do a new one for some reason, but you've all sent emails. You just type in youth orchestras at, I think I have this on a banner here. Here it is. And then you would attach your, um, PDF or your picture, um, JPEG or GIF of your um, your solo to the file, and then you would type in your name and your instrument and what orchestra you're auditioning for. So even though I couldn't complete that process in an email, that is the idea of it. If you have any questions, you can email us at youthorchestras.com and ask us. So that is the email address on your screen there. All right. So let's see here. All right, so we have a few more questions coming in. All right, great question here. From Amy. 
by what day does the audition need to be submitted? Great question. And I did not say that, although it was on the auditions page. Uh, we are uh, trying to get all of the auditions in by July 6th. July 6th. If there are extenuating circumstances for anybody, because things are so crazy right now, if there are extenuating circumstances, just communicate with us and we will continue to accept auditions uh, based on need. Um, anybody who has their auditions in prior or by July 6th will have priority for open uh, spots that are available in the orchestras. For stringed instruments, uh, we don't run out of spots. We will we'll take all of the stringed instruments into the program that we, that we can if you are qualified to play in it. All right. Um, good question here. Chrissy, will this be all be posted so I can recall the information provided? Yes, it will. And I'm going to actually invite uh, Melissa Lentz, our marketing director, um, on right now just to talk about a little bit about that. Hi, Melissa. You are muted, I believe. Okay, muted, now I'm blinded. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so once this Thanks video for is done, um, it'll be uploaded as just a, well, it'll be available as a regular video. So you can definitely go through and view the information provided. We will also, I'll make sure to get this downloaded and I'll also make it available on Instagram for those of you who prefer Instagram as a platform. So. That will be an option as well. And I'll also put it on the DSSO's YouTube page. So there will be Fantastic. Some yeah. Wonderful. Great. All right. Okay. So from Daisy. Hi, Daisy. Do you have pointers for auditions? Well, um, we are going to have a whole set of videos that are going to go up um, as soon as we have them completed. Actually, we'll probably start to post them as we get them in um, by instrument from DSSO um, members. And they will be doing a, a, a set of examples of playing the excerpt and recommendations for what to pay attention to and different options of uh, uh, being able to play or um, practice the scales um, according to the level of the student. So um, those will be really helpful. Um, if you have any more specific questions on auditions, I think in general, what I would say is choose a tempo that is most appropriate for you rather than trying to play everything too fast. Um, play, playing accurately, makes you sound better than trying to play fast and making a messy um, performance of it. So I think that that's really important. And then, of course, uh, paying attention to uh, counting. Counting is very important. And intonation, that's very important, of course. And um, I think those are the, the general uh, things. But the more specific pointers will come in the, those sets of videos. So there'll be a few weeks that those will be up before the, the deadline of July 6th. If you have a more specific question than that or a question about a specific instrument, let me know. All right. We have, we have here a question about tuition. How does tuition get billed? I think Melissa can help us with that? Yeah, so last year I helped to kind of make this process a little bit easier. Um, I won't be the person directly helping with tuition this year. I'm actually moving out to Washington, so oh, I can't really so help sad. I'll still be doing the marketing and everything, so I'll still be available. Um, but typically tuition, um, the invoice for tuition will go out in the acceptance packet. Um, just so you have it there, uh, we haven't solidified how the billing structure for this year is going to go, being that the world is 
kind of in shambles. <laughs> um, so we're definitely going to be really, really flexible with options available. Typically, we've done um, payment plans. So you can pay per month, per week. You can pick the date that it comes out of your credit card, or we can always set up um, something where you're paying by check each month or you're paying on a quarterly basis. Um, it's always been really flexible since I've been able to help with this program. So we'll make anything possible. Um, there's also the option for applying for aid for um, tuition as well. That form, I will also go out with um, the acceptance packet. So that'll be there. Um, aid might be a little bit limited for this coming season, but we'll always try to make it happen. Um, it's courtesy of our donors and our sponsors. Uh, so honestly, tuition is really, really flexible. I know that for Youth Symphony, that $600 can seem really intimidating and like, oh my gosh, I have to pay all of this up front. No, we'll make it so that if you set up a payment plan by this date, you're fine. Um, we just want to have that communication open between administrative and parents. So in the end, it's really, it's really flexible. We'll send out reminders as needed, but in the end, don't, don't hesitate to reach out to us and be like, hey, I might not be able to make this month. We'll be really, really, really flexible with it. So I don't want parents to worry about not being able to have their child continue performing because of the tuition limitation. So, but I'm very, great. <laughs> very Thank striped you. right that's now. In, sorry. That's intense. <laughs> Western you can see I'm body. starting to get a nice sheen here. It's pretty warm where I am as well. <laughs> <laughs> we'll take it while it's here. Right. So um, you mentioned the acceptance packets, um, and I think it's, it's something uh, that I should address. Uh, they will be going out uh, sometime in the first couple of weeks of August. Again, we are sort of in a holding pattern. We're making contingency plans for what's going to be going on. When the acceptance packets going out, go acceptance packets go out, we still may not know everything at that time. So we will do the best we can at the time. Um, and as soon as we know something, the prospective members or the accepted members will know it as well. Um, we will continue to make um, update posts on the youth orchestras and DSSO uh, Facebook pages and anything important on the youth orchestras page. So. Great. And um, any other questions that have come in here? I don't see any so far. Let me quick. Yeah. Check this one. I'm holding my planner up so I <laughs> so you can see your screen. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think so. I think no. um, one thing to mention, if you do leave a comment below after this video is no longer live, we'll definitely get back to you as soon as possible with any answers or clarification on things. Um, so don't hesitate to leave a comment below or send us a message personally, we'll, we'll get it. Absolutely. And then you can always send a question to youth orchestras at dsso.com as well. I think that's about about all that um, that I can think of for the, the evening. Anything else that uh, that you can think of, Melissa? I don't think so. Just I'm gonna, we're, we're trying to figure things out as we go and yeah. I'm going to bring Dr. Jones back in. That was Hi, Dr. Jones, as you were listening, did you have any any other comments or questions that are comments that you thought of? No, I don't I don't think so. I know we really look forward to getting auditions in and um, having a fresh group of students. Uh, it's an amazing program. It's one that that I've been privileged to be a part of for three years and uh, have my own child in in the program as well. And it's it's a spectacular thing. So I'm looking forward to another great season. Awesome. I am as well. This is definitely, 
definitely one of the highlights of my entire professional life. <laughs> So I really missed everybody at the at the end of this season. I know you did too, Dr. Jones. And I know that uh, Mr. Kwok and Mr. Hessian and Ms. Kimmis and uh, Ms. Mr. Carey, um, we were just heartbroken that we weren't able to go through the end of the year, that all of the ensembles were doing so well. And that final concert is such a capstone experience. And we didn't get to say goodbye to our seniors in person, but we did send out a, a letter and the certificates to them, but that's just not the same. So um, we want you to know, for those of you that have been members of the program, that we really love you and can't wait to see you and work with you again in person. Absolutely. All right. I think I just saw one comment come in. Great, some nice comments from John and Linda there. Thank you very much. And with that, I think we'll wrap it up. And uh, please, if you have additional questions, let us know. Good night, everybody. Good night. Thanks, Melanie.